Well, just in case I didn't state this in the in the video at all, I I just wanted you to be aware of the fact that this, and I know I mentioned that she hasn't been ridden in years and had a head stall on, but there was absolutely no warm up here. I saddled her up and I clicked the video on, and started explaining about the different types of headgear. So this is as close as I can give you to a what you would see is a young horse so certainly if I rode her around and warmed her up a little bit you you wouldn't see the fussiness I, I haven't looked at the video yet but uh, so that's as close as I can give you to a young horse as I can and, and how how to deal with it Let me uh, disclose a few myths to you. Ben, uh, you know, one thing I've noticed, you know, and I always watch patterns, patterns of people. And, uh, horse people are some of the most gullible and so quick to jump on something new in the horse world. You know, in the bitless bridle, there are so many different varieties of that right now. And to be honest with you, I've never even had one in my hands. Uh, you know, and just like I said about uh, the horse people wanting to jump on something new. It's like that new horseshoe with that wedge-shaped pad. It's, I haven't even read it so much because it, it, it's a wedge pad. The nails were all in the front, four nails in the front of the toe. And it's supposed to work like a, like a flip-flop or something. Well, that's a crock of crap. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, what you ride in and where you ride has a big, a, a big choice of what you do and how good the relationship is with your horse. So, you know, because if you, you go riding out in these mountains, and I'm talking about not on the trails or anything, you have no idea what you're gonna run into. So you really need to be prepared. You know, so this is what I start a lot of my horses in, is a rope hackamore. And you see a lot of people riding with just uh, a rope halter you know, but it's, they've got it tied to the loop here. See, this, this actually has a set of Makati reins on it. So you're, it's got a heel knot up above. See, it has a heel knot up above. What you're gonna run into when you, and I've ridden in just a halter before, but just, uh, I mean, you know, messing around in the arena or something. The other thing you got to watch out for is how much space you have here under under the jaw. Some people got halters that are so big, and this I, I don't have it on her, so I'll actually put it on her so that you see what I'm talking about. When it's adjusted and up underneath the jaw where it should be. So, you see, I don't have, there's, there's no play here. You know, it's just a little bit. Some people have got halters that got so much play that, that, that this loop is, is way down here. Well, what's going to happen is, uh, you're going to pull on those reins and the reins are actually going to come and catch on the throat before you get much happening up there. You know, your head, your horse's head will only tip, his, tip in so far before where you've got the reins tied that it's going to catch on the horse's neck. So the other thing I'll tell you is that 
Hackamore or a Bozal to be better and more exact has been around for hundreds of years. The, the different effect that you have with a Bozal than what you'll have with this is that it actually tips. It, when you pick up the reins, it actually tips. It pivots on the, the hanger. So you have a different effect than what you get with this. See, the, the, the nose piece doesn't tip down on this when you pick up the reins, whereas with a Bozal, it does. Uh, and I don't have one. I'm certainly going to get one at some point in time because, like I said, they've been around for hundreds of years with great success, and there's no problems there. The only, you know, fit is a big thing with a, a bull's owl, and you, you can't just run out and buy a cheap one. So you got to get one uh, from somebody that, makes really good ones and they're not cheap and then like i said the fit you get horses that have narrower noses than others so yeah it can get to be a pretty expensive proposition but it if you're serious about your horsemanship that stuff is is well worth the money you pay for it so what I'm going to show you here, and the use of a snaffle bit. So many people use it wrong. It's not designed to be pulled on with, with two hands. It's designed for one rein at a time. And the action of a snaffle bit, yes, it can be very severe if you're using it incorrectly. You see people that use draw reins. Well, so now your rein angle comes up like this, and yeah, your snaffle bit is working like this. It's working like a nutcracker because people are using both reins at the same time. And then I'm going to show you another effect that I see people doing. And I'm going to show you something different here. You know, we're always teaching horses to get off of pressure. Soften your face. Well, I'm going to show you, this is one time when you use the horse's natural resistance to push against pressure in order to get the horse to lower its head. See, everybody's trying to force the head into lowering. So I'm going to show you something different here today. So like I said, you know, the, the rain effect from here, see, on two reins, that snaffle bit is working just like just like this. You know? And and it's like it like a nutcracker. So like I said, I'm gonna show you a different way to go about that. And use the horse's natural action to push against pressure so you get to a point where you play a little game with your horse and this horse hasn't been saddled hasn't had a head stall on it and god I can't even tell you how long so and she's fussing with that bit because that bit hasn't been in the horse's mouth in, in so long that uh, it's got a lot of rust on it. And the horses love the taste of rust. So, here, here's the, the comedy act that I see that I don't particularly care for. And I actually have to laugh because of the stupidity of it. Is, is this maneuver. The, the hands down on the knees riding like this. They're all bent forward and they're so concerned about trying to get that horse to lower its head. So here, I'm gonna show you something. If I pick up the horses like this, when the horse puts its head down, because now the action is running straight up the jaw. See, if I pick it up like this, 
it, it's straight up the jaw. So if I just pick up, I say, if you're going to put your head up, I'm going to hold my reins up. So if I start riding like this, and the horse picks their, he picks their head up, right, I'm going to pick the reins up, and I'm going to say, well, if you're going to, oh, you want your head down there. See, I, I pick up on two reins, but I'm using my seat more than anything. So it's not that you can't pick up on two reins, but you, you use each rein independently. You don't use two. So even if I do pick up on two, right, I'm only using my fingers, like kind of like a skid steer. So as I close my fingers, I'm not, you know, I'm not pulling the rein here. I'm just closing my fingers. So this hand will stay in neutral, but like in a skid steer, you have two levers. So if you want to break this side, that's what I do. I break it. But, you know, in a skid steer, you're actually pulling your lever backwards, whereas my action is with my my fingers. So if I go here and I tighten this, see what I get? So if I if I go here and I tighten this, see what I get? So if I pick up on two reins and I'm riding along and the horse do, does that, I'll go, well, I'll, if you're going to do that, I'm going to pick my hand up. So this takes some teaching. It's not like you get this all of a sudden. You just have to start riding in a minute. If you're looking for contact, right? Well, if you ask for contact and the horse's head goes up, stop doing what you're doing and say, well, oh, you want your head up there? I'll pick it up and I'll hold it and wait. You know, and she's not as bad as what she used to be because she's been through this. So when she puts her head, her head down, I put my reins down. It, it's really that simple. You know, I can't really film because I have nobody running the camera. Can't really film me riding her. But that's all it would be. You start riding her and riding a horse, and when you start asking, you start asking for softness. Uh, see, so she, of course, some some of the what she's doing is fussing with the flies. You're gonna you're gonna ride with your head up. I'm gonna hold my hand up. I'm not pulling the reins, I'm asking for that with my seat. See, there, there's the head up. Okay, so that's what I do. Pick my reins up. If you're going to hold your head up, I'm going to pick my hand up. And it won't, it won't take that long. It takes consistency. Of course, when you're starting a horse, it's going to take a lot. And I don't do any of this flexing anymore. I, <laughs> I, I get all that softness into the side of my horse. <coughs> so, because if you if that's all you do is flex, right, you're, you're going to get a horse that's what I call rubber neck. She's had a lot of that because that's how I rolled when I started here. I rolled, you know, using the same techniques that everybody's using nowadays. It, you know, I said, you know, watch what all your friends do and do the opposite. See, so I sit and I'm holding my, you know, now she's putting her head down. 
you know, watch what all your friends do and do the opposite. See, all your friends are either trying to hold, hold that horse's head in and tuck, or, or they're using draw reins, or they're riding like this, heaven forbid. So see, see there, there's that. No, that's because I'm asking her to move the forehand. She, she's getting a little antsy about it. Like I say, she hasn't been ridden in a long time, and all that fussing with the bit is only, only because of, of the rust on it. She hasn't been ridden in quite a while. And she's she's a hot horse. I mean, it's been years since I've had her saddled and a head stall on her. my right hand, right, or closing my left hand, see, it, I, I, what I'm doing is uh, rotating from side to side, depending on which one rein gets tight. So if this rein gets tight, it's this side that's driving more than the other side. So I just start closing my fingers on this side. Pay attention. Most of your horses are gonna drive with one side more than the other. That's why it requires balance. But when I get a nice straight back up from her, then I know I'm pretty well balanced. So when, when you're back up, if it starts leaking that way, it's because this hind foot is driving. A, when you when you got the sides balanced, the horse will stop straight and back up straight. But when you don't, it's, it's either going to go left or right, left or right, and uh, well, if it goes to the right. Because the horse is wanting to get, is driving with that right hind foot more than the other. The other one wants to back up. So it's like a car that has a, a wheel that's locked up. Well, if you're driving with this one and this one's locked up, it the car skids to the right. See, that, that hind leg is not wanting to go forward. Here again is that, that maneuver backwards, over, and backwards. So if she's wanting to drive there, I'm gonna, I, I'll go backwards, over, backwards again. See, so she didn't, didn't stop. I shut off backwards, over, backwards again. And she's had this several times. It's just a matter of saying, hey, you forgot. 
That's why I only had to do it once. So I pick up my reins and say, pay attention, but I shift my center back here. Shut off. Shift my center back. Go forward. Shift my center back. See, I'm not doing anything with my reins. Unless she backs crooked. See, now she's actually leaking a little bit that way. But that's what it all boils down to. There's lots of things in this world where uh, people have gotten away from correct teaching. That, that's half the problem. The snaffle bit has been around for hundreds of years, uh, and so has the bozal. It's people's learnings that have become different. You know, and watching what all their friends do, or watching new teachings of this. Go back to the old school. The old school was taught correctly because they actually still knew what those tools were made for and how they were designed to be used. 